Hi, today I want to show you the new features in Hovercraft system from Alan Games. So, first of all, I will show you what I've added. It's some counter movements and uh, a grid maker, but that's I'm gonna show you that later. So, first of all, I will show you this is like a very speedy uh, hovercraft. It's uh, it's meant to like be drifty. So yeah, and now I will show you another hovercraft. Uh, so like I know a UFO. I've added some particles, and yeah, it's basically a UFO. It adapts very nicely to this hilly terrain, and. I don't know, a huge hovercraft, so you can basically do any models. And this is made with the grid system that I'm, I will show you later. It's, yeah. And it does what the rest of hovercrafts do. So it floats and tilts nicely when you turn. Okay, there is a zone control one, so you basically have like, let's say you are in VR and this ball is your hand, uh, you just put your hand in these boxes, and these boxes steer it, I will not show you right now. And yeah, I, I will just create one, uh, hover, hovercraft. So, I will create a box, and you do not have to worry about scales or anything, hovercraft will just put in an object, and it will not affect anything, but let's say you have like um, so basically this object is a model, and this is so let's call it model or the test maybe, and here are just two boxes. I will just scale this one up so that it looks at least somehow, I guess. Damn it. Okay, so mm, okay, I shouldn't really scale that. Okay, let's say that this is my hovercraft. Yeah, I know, great model. <laughs> so now what you can do is just go shift alt h and this open going to open hovercraft maker or just tools Alan games hovercraft system hovercraft maker it will automatically select some stuff and here you select the ground layer and some settings and if you want the new input system wrapper so the new input system basically you will have to go to uh, this folder new input and import this and in the source code that's included you will have to um, remove a few lines but if you click generate with this on it will just uh, debug uh, what you have to do so yeah very simple and it's uh, yeah okay so let's just click generate oh and I forgot one important thing but you can do it here see it put it in the mesh hold you have to change the layer so that it wouldn't interfere with the ground layer so let's say change it to water and yeah, it uh, automatically fill in uh, hover points like this, these uh, blue dots here, um, here, 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 and here and there. But it's not really the best for all of hovercraft. So what I've done is I've created a grid system that you can do for anything really. You can uh, create grids with it. Here are a lot of options. There are a lot of options. It shows you how much uh, points uh, totally are here, and you can create really cool grids with it. And these grids can be created for, I don't know, even like pathfinding. It's really up to you. And you can place points on each, uh, I mean objects on each point. So it will, instead of placing just a transform, it will place this point and name it nicely. And if you want, you can assign it. In this case, I want to a hovercraft and then it's going to add these uh, points as automatically as hover points 
but here you can set circle to it and then just uh, tweak some settings to create the desired hover points so that's what I did with the UFO it was a circle so I just uh, made it with and uh, circle you can tweak a lot of settings here so yeah but I just gonna go with uh, the square here you can see a nice custom editor so yeah I'm not sure this will be good I do suggest you put like um, so that the hover points would be extending a lot from the hovercraft I'm not sure if this will be good uh, because when the hovercraft will approach a uh, slope it has to detect uh, the slope so the hover points will start pushing it on this position and then it will align to the terrain nicely so let's just spawn them it, as you can see it spawned 55 I mean 56 because it's zero indexing and it said it will spawn 56 so yeah uh, here are all these points automatically assigned and here these kind of forces may be a bit too big uh, so if I just play and it may just go up simply uh, or be very unstable and that's normal that's uh, okay oh, I forgot to remove the grid spawner you do not need it anymore uh, that's very normal because uh, it's very unstable when you have this amount of hover points so what I like to do is change the lift force mode to velocity change it's pretty stable then and just copy the uh, settings because you know you don't want to do 56 by hand 56 changes and you just have to tweak the settings a bit see it's the way it's smooth and nice but it's still uh, very not cool when it's in air like when I jump oh. okay so that's the uh, lift force le I mean leveling force I will just change it to like 100 and I don't know if it will be correct but maybe yeah so now it's correct so in the text snows uh, correctly but you can see that it does touch the ground and it like drifts and that's okay behavior if you want drifting but touching ground is not so we'll fix that in a moment I'll just put the camera position a bit further so first of all uh, since well here you can see a full debug by the way I forgot to mention that it will show you the forces so what what you can do is just select like the here okay, let's select the height that's kind of cool in my opinion and now just uh, drag the hover height up and now you can just when you think it's okay so let's say 3.2 and then let's select the ground detection distance it always needs to be higher so I will just select 3.6 or 3.8 and now it will avoid touching the ground even more so you can see it doesn't touch it it just did here a little bit and it still drifts and if you want drifting then that's good enough I guess you can just drift like this but that's due to the count custom counter movement system so if you want you can just uh, make the drag way higher um, and disable this or you can well use these uh, counter movement forces and um, it sometimes will touch the ground if you do not clamp on, on the Y but it's sometimes better to clamp it on the Y so that's why I leave it false um, so yeah and these are just ca uh, counter movement forces so and the f yeah it will just counter the movement so you can see I do not just go rolling off Oh, and by the way, someone asked me uh, because the hovercraft, uh, his hovercraft, were was <laughs> uh, was just riding down slope like this. It was just getting pushed off. You can see here it's getting pushed off, and that's due to the no uh, max normal angle and the lift type sp space. So this is the max normal that it can ride on. If it will be higher, it will just try to push off. Okay, so now 60 degrees is okay for it. Here, uh, let's say if it will be okay here. Uh, yeah, so 60 degrees is just fine here. But if I go to like a big boy slope, uh, like that, 
I think it's over 60 degrees it will just push me uh, on the side and here it's not 60 degrees anymore by the way you can see the normal here so okay it just pushes me off yeah uh, it's driving down and for it to work better you can just make the ground detection distance higher so yeah now it's way smoother but I'm just going to leave it at 90 oh and uh, the lift type space if I change it to local it will just always uh, do just push in a different space so it will just act differently so it can stay but it's wonky that way now it's just staying still yeah okay so now <laughs> okay I am um, I'll just So yeah, and this, uh, yeah, so that would be it for the grid system actually. Yeah. Oh, and if you want, uh, one more thing, I remember. Uh, if you wanted to like stick to the ground and not just fly off into the distance, you can send the uh, Y up counter force higher. And now it will not let it slide off that much. So yeah. But uh, keep in mind that if you do so, uh, the jumping may work differently. But we, although everything seems to be f just fine here. So awesome. Yeah, so now it will just stick to the ground a little bit more. If you want, you can make it like 2000 and this uh, on the mi if you set it on the minus this value uh, it will just uh, be like additional velocity so it will add the velocity instead of removing it but here you can see it just went downwards and I'm still drifting which uh, to just showcase uh, I do not have to I will remove uh, so Basically, let's set this one to 1000 and this one to like 2000. And you do not have to clamp it. Uh, if you don't clamp it, um, well, I will show you in a second. But now it just turns uh, very quickly and you do not drift. That's what counter forces do. And wait a minute. Okay. So, yeah. But if you do not clamp it, uh, I haven't actually checked this, but I know it does work. If you do not clamp this, uh, yeah, the vehicle may move very slowly, depending on what values you pick. So then, since this acceleration is basically negating this forward speed, and it's not getting clamped, so it's just pushing it very, very hard. So I will test a bit, just to see. Yeah, so now it's just not like it's stopping it uh, accordingly to um, to its velocity. And by the way, you can count what uh, values will be correct because you can see that uh, max speed uh, is twenty, so five hundred. Uh, 5000 divided by 20 and this value will negate it uh, pretty not all of it but uh, a lot of it so if you just I don't know 10 here and then like 120 here so yeah if you do not want to clamp it that's totally okay I actually like this because it's like dumping it so I will leave it as this but now uh, you can just change 
add this one to eight. Oh, damn, this tutorial is long. Uh, okay, I will, um, so yeah. And actually, the forward uh, speed is actually like more of acceleration because the max speed determines how fast you can go. But yeah, this is actually a cool uh, hovercraft that we've created here. So I'm going to put it as a prefab uh, in the asset. Another <laughs> prefab to go. Uh, let's just reset it. And yeah, that will be it. Bye bye.